One idea to protect Singapore's northwestern coast against rising sea levels is to raise the Kranji Dam. Another is simply to allow some areas to flood briefly and wait for water levels to recede. Protecting the rich nature biodiversity there is another major consideration. And these came out of the first conversation with the community as part of a study to develop coastal protection measures in the area. Charlotte Lim with more. These waters are calm for now, but rising sea levels and high tides could put Singapore's northwest coastline at risk of flooding. The study focuses on a 15-kilometre stretch from Lim Chu Kang to Woodlands. It is home to rich biodiversity areas such as the Sungai Buloh Wetland Reserve. There are also upcoming developments like the expanded Woodlands Checkpoint and the Sungai Kadut Eco District. The diverse land use means authorities need to carefully consider the impact on nature when taking action. We can locate our measures behind the mangrove habitats and also allowing parts of the Sungai Buloh Wetland Reserve to be transiently floodable during extreme sea levels. For example, at the Kapa area next to the visitor centre. The mangroves are well adapted to floods. Building structures across the swamps will affect its habitat. Another potential option is to raise the 17 metres high Kranji Dam to protect against rising seas, while widening it to include footpaths and cycling paths. Hopefully also together with tree lining to create a shade for people who are using this uh, path. And these are the, are the possible scenarios which will make the accessibility of this uh, Songhai Baro and also to the Kranji area more accessible for cyclists and for uh, people who walk. About 50 people from groups such as fishing communities and business owners were also involved in the discussion. If we put in something, it means that we'll have to sacrifice something else. Uh, and that's the reason why we want to have this conversation with you early on, right now, so that we can understand what are the trade-offs inherent to protecting certain parts of the coastline uh, using different options. So some may mean that we sacrifice some of our productive land space, so maybe less living, less industrial. Some could mean that some parts of our nature and biodiversity would then need to be uh, rethink and reimagined. There are plans for more engagement. This study started two years ago and it is set to finish in the next one to two years. And for more on this, we're speaking next to Dr. Stefan Chua, who is Principal Investigator at the Earth Observatory of Singapore at NTU. Stefan, great to have you in the studio with us. Happy to be here. Now, let's start a little bit with the whole northwest coast of Singapore. That includes the area from Lim Chu Kang to Woodlands. So why is this area so different and unique in Singapore to the other areas? In one word, is natural, because it is neither reclaimed nor reinforced. Now about 70% of the island is already reinforced by some form of hard structures, be it those uh, walls and engineering solutions protecting our airport in the east, our seaports in the west and our central business district. We also have those um, reclaimed areas in the, in the south, be it uh, uh, East Coast Park, it is also protected by, by breakwaters as well as in pastries. But only in this, what I call CCC, the cozy coastal corner of Singapore, they have these natural mangroves. And I kid you not, because when Raffles came more than 200 years ago, 13% um, of Singapore's shorelines were mangroves. Mm. But today, this number has reduced to about 0.5 to 1%. And the majority of these mangroves, these pristine mangroves, some of them, in that little co cozy coastal corner. Mm, it's quite a fragile ecosystem, I would say, at this point. But when it comes to sea level rise, would you say that this area is more or less at risk? So it's a double-edged sword. And um, scientists in the last few years have been trying to investigate what is known as the tipping point of uh, mangroves to sea level. So sea level, so mangroves are typically, we consider them coastal protectors. Why? Because they can trap uh, sediments with their root system, enabling them to keep pace with rising sea levels. But uh, scientists in the last few years published a series of papers looking at mangrove and seagrass and, and salt marsh tipping points. And it seemed that historically over the last few thousand years, when sea level rise was above 
or it reach or above seven millimeters per year, mangroves are not able to keep up, not able to trap mm -hmm. sediments effectively, and they actually retreat landward, and therefore they give in to sea level rise. Yeah, and you mentioned the mangroves earlier, but are there also other special habitats here, um, apart from Sungai Bulu or the mangroves, that you think we really need to protect? that is quite fragile and prone to problems when it comes to sea level rise? I think the mangroves and the mudflats by themselves are the key because they are comprised of sediments because sediments are the building blocks of every coast. And it is no surprise that um, this whole discussion is nested upon the idea of coastal protection. Mm -hmm. So from that standpoint, I would say that I would argue that it's important to understand the sediment dynamics that is actually keeping the mudflats because the mudflats front the mangroves. The mudflats are where sea grasses sometimes are and they actually give a buffer between the rising sea and the land. So mm -hmm. I think these are important to keep. Yeah, and if we don't protect these areas, these mangroves and mudflats, as you see, what would we stand to lose? Not just in terms of nature, but also you know, when it comes to heritage and also when it comes to um, the history of the place. Actually, this place is very close to my heart. I studied, first studied it more than 20 years ago when I was uh, an undergrad and I would study the Kranji coast before there was a boardwalk. And anecdotally, as I go back over the years, I realised that there's at least been 20 meters of coastal erosion over the last 20 years. Hence, uh, when I go back, I noticed that the mangroves were, the, the base of the mangrove roots are exposed, they're eroded, they're falling down, and you can see the whole coast retreating. So in terms of what we lose, we lose very important ecosystem functions. For example, the orang salat. So it's part of our natural and uh, cultural heritage. The people of the straits, right, used to you, uh, depend on the Johor Straits for livelihood. They need to fish. And in recent years, there were art articles in the newspaper where their fishing catch is just reducing dramatically. And that could be due to a host of variety of reasons. It could be pollution, it could be land reclamation. But more, or more, more we are seeing that there's disruptions to this environment, disrupting their way of life. Mm -hmm. It's disrupting the mangrove's ability to be nurseries. It's disrupting the mangrove's ability to keep the coast in place. And as a nature-based solution, I think there has to be some interventions for us to maintain the integrity of this important landscape. Mm. And when it comes to interventions, people often talk about building seawalls, polders, or even dikes. Why would such big engineering solutions not be particularly suitable uh, for this fragile ecosystem? I think that's a great question. And, but we have seen effective use of such engineering solutions elsewhere. But it's case specific. So I uh, kudos to PUB. They, have, they are cognizant of the fact that every coast has its unique characteristics and therefore they have coast specific studies. And every coast has its own uh, set of challenges and solutions. So there are polders that's been built uh, on Pulau Tekong. It fits that context. But when you talk about hard structures, typically what you're worried about is the inability for the mangroves to migrate. Yeah. So mangroves are natural systems. And natural systems, they respond to natural uh, variability in the system. So during monsoons, when there's more rain, less sediments or more sediments, it will just retreat and go forward and backwards. But if there is infrastructure, if there's hard structures at the back, for example, seawalls mm -hmm. behind it, there'll be this phen phenomenon called coastal urban squeeze where mangroves have nowhere to retreat and they become smaller. And if sea level rises to a certain extreme, it will die off. Mm -hmm. So I'm quite encouraged that there's a shift in mindset. I would say that um, the dialogue session gives me hope that there's a change in mindset that the trade-offs need not be so um, skewed to the human point of view and that we give nature a chance, connectivity. So you don't have hard structures preventing floods. Oh, you let flooding be transient. We let it go. We allow flooding and we allow maybe mangroves a place to retreat to so that they don't get squeezed and die. Mm, Stefan, thank you so much for breaking all of that down for us. I've been speaking with Dr. Stefan Chua, who is Principal Investigator at the Earth Observatory of Singapore at NTU Singapore.